Welcome back to Solar Chats with Dave. I'm Aaron and I'm here with the Point Zero Energy owner and founder, Dave. So Dave, today we're gonna to talk about inverters. Inverters are one of the key components in a power station. So let's talk about what is an inverter. An inverter is a device that converts the power from your batteries, which is DC, into usable AC power. The appliances in your house all use AC power, so you can't plug them directly into the battery, so you need to convert it, and that's where the inverter comes in. So this is an example of an inverter. It says here, 4,000 watt. So what does that mean? If you read to the fine print there, it says surge power of 4,000 watts. That means that when it first turns on an appliance, they can take more power than when they're continuously running. And it can start something up to 4,000 watts. But then if you look over here, it says continuous watts, 2,000 watts. If you have an appliance that uses more than 2,000 watts continuously, it will not be able to run it. I'd imagine that there are a lot of different power levels available in an inverter. Since this one is 2,000, I've seen them at 4,000, 5,000, so why is that important? In fact, they go clear down to several hundred watts or even you know, less than 100 watts. You have inverters that plug into your cigarette port where you can power a laptop or something like that. So it's very important to know what you're running. If you've got an inverter that plugs into your cigarette port and then you try to run a cooktop stove that takes 1,500 watts, it's gonna probably burn up that inverter. A common question we get from consumers is, how much power do I need to power a certain size home? But is that really the right question to ask? It really depends on what you're powering in the house. You might have a ton of appliances in your house, you know, like I might want to run a blender, a microwave, some lights, TV. So you don't just add all these up because it could go way over the rated amount. It's what you're going to run at one time. My refrigerator's running all the time, but I'm going to use my microwave very periodically. Right. I'm gonna turn on lights for a couple hours at night, I'm gonna use the TV or charge my computer, those kind of things. So looking at what I'm gonna use over a length of time is the better way to look at how much power I need versus adding everything up into one and thinking I need a 10,000 watt inverter when really all I need is a 2,000 watt and that'll suffice. And with the inverter, it's not really the length of time. That's more like your battery and solar panel calculations, but the inverter is just at any one time. I think that definitely clarifies what size inverter our consumers may need. Is there too big of an inverter that you can buy? If I only need 100 watts and I buy a 10,000 watt inverter, is there anything wrong with that? Well, for one thing, it's going to cost a lot more money. So you're going to spend a lot more money for sure. that inverter. But probably the biggest problem is that, just like a car, if you buy a little Geo Metro, it gets really good gas mileage. You're not burning much mm. gas. If you buy a big diesel semi truck to drive to town to get your groceries, you're burning a lot of gas and a lot of money. Same thing with the inverter. If you get a big 10,000 watt inverter, it's actually burning more power just running itself than a smaller one. So you kind of want to get that close to the same size. You definitely want to oversize than undersize, but you don't want to go extreme. And we'll talk more about that in another video about the no load power draw and how that affects your system. Well, that wraps up our introduction to inverters. I hope you learned something new and useful and we'll catch you next time on our chats with Dave.